Hey guys, and welcome to a tutorial series for the Animal Behavior Kit. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the improvements made to the animal spawners in the 1.3 update. So you'll see that the spawn triggers can now auto-populate the spawners inside the volume. You'll see what I mean with that. The triggers can now despawn only in active animals. That's new. That helps you uh, keep the realism in your game. And now the animal spawners themselves can now do a check for nearby players to make sure that they're not spawning animals when the player is nearby to kind of hide the fact that animals are just spawning from thin air, right? So let's go ahead and go to Unreal. And if you've been following this uh, 1.3 series, you'll, you'll see that we used this test level before to test a bunch of settings, including the inactive options, um, etc., including the troubleshooter that's right here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all of these animals right here. We're not going to need them. We are going to, I'm going to move these guys to the scene. We're going to start completely fresh. We are going to use the animal spawners. And I already have a tutorial about the general idea of why you would use the animal spawners. So I'm not going to spend too much time on setup. You should go and watch that video. I'm going to show you the differences with the animal spawners that we have right now. So if I go ahead and drop this guy here, this is an animal spawner. And right here, you'll see that we have a few options, including the spawn method, which is begin play. It'll basically immediately spawn the animals as soon as the game starts. It'll wait for you to overlap the trigger, which you can see here, or they can be completely inactive, right? And you can have the trigger scale. I'm gonna change the trigger scale here make it 20 by 20 just to make it a point here just to show you real quick the different modes uh, you have a spawn delay every time an animal is spawned um, and you have here the ground animal list which is obviously the most important thing so we're going to spawn a deer let's see female deer and we're going to spawn two of these female deers and you can see that we have the options here, random location and engaged behavior will be ignored. And let's also spawn a male. So deer, male, and let's spawn three males instead of two. So it's gonna be th uh, two females and three males. And if I just do this, right, and I click play, You'll see that every two seconds, a new animal is spawned. Because we have this uh, set up as begin play. All right. If we were to change this to overlap trigger, then it would only wait until we overlap the trigger so nothing would happen and again this is a very quick recap because you see, this is obviously on the other video but as soon as i overlap the trigger you'll see that we now start spawning the animals obviously the trigger would be a lot bigger um, than the trigger here uh, you would make the trigger really big and as soon as you are you know maybe going through a corner then, then you want the animal to start spawning, right? So using, using the overlap trigger is more efficient because you're only spawning the animals when the player is nearby, right? However, it can still be annoying to make this trigger really big, right? Maybe 100 uh, by 100 or something. And then you have to change the location here. And then when the player gets here, you can still maybe see the animal here spawning. So it's not really ideal. So the recommended setup is that instead of having just one animal spawner say you have a big area we actually have several animal spawners right so we're going to go ahead and just select these guys i'm just going to make four here we have four animal spawners here and what we're going to do is we're going to have a separate trigger which is this class here bp animal spawner underscore trigger and these trigger is going to activate all of the spawners when this trigger is activated so if i if i grab the spawners here by the way i'm going to make them inactive 
That's the third option, meaning that we will not spawn them in begin play and we will not use their local triggers. We're going to, they're going to be completely inactive. They're going to be waiting for another blueprint to tell them to spawn the animals. And I can then grab this guy here and say, okay, so I want this trigger. Oops. Let's make it 50 here. When I hit this trigger here, I want these four animal spawners to activate at the same time. And of course, you can say, I'm going to make this visible, the trigger, so you can see it in game. So I disable trigger hidden. And then there's a spawner list, and you would have to add the spawner. So you can click on the little eyedropper tool here. You can see that I, you can add it here. And I'm just going to select the first two uh, just to show you what I mean here. I click play. And you see the trigger here, it's kind of hard to see, but as soon as I hit this trigger, you see that both animal spawners have been activated and they're spawning the animals, as you see right there. Okay. However, there's a better way of doing this. You can do it this way, right? So maybe your, your world is more linear, but another way would be that we can you can overlap all of the spawners within this volume, right? So let's say, that I want to make this 50 by 50. Let's make it a little bit more, maybe 80 by 80 here. So you're basically making with this trigger kind of a zone in your level. You're saying this zone right here, as soon as the player enters this area, all of the triggers, all of these um, spawners will be active. And you can basically use in this technique separate your world into different zones right so what we can do here is say that you have a really big zone and you have you know i don't know 20 30 spawners in different areas of your world instead of having to manually add them i've added a little blue utility here called populate spawners if i click it you'll see that we're doing a box trace around the volume of the trigger here and automatically the spawners have been populated. That's just a convenience that I've added here. That's what I meant with auto populate, right? So if we go back to the slides, you see that the first thing I say is that we can now auto populate. This is just a convenience. Like I said, uh, if you only have four triggers, makes no difference. If you have a really large zone and you have different spawners in different areas, you can just make sure that they're all within this volume and automatically add them here. And then what happens now is that you can see as, as I hit play, as soon as I overlap this trigger, then the spawners uh, start working here. All of them at the same time. All right. Now there's another option here, which is called kill animals. And, I, and I've had this before but there's a little bit of a difference here. Kill animal means that when you when you exit the trigger, all of the animals that have been spawned by all the spawners inside will be killed. And you can either kill the animals in with kill mode, uh, kill animals, basically cause the event death, or you can destroy the animals, which is automatic and immediate, right? Kill animals will, will play the death animation and it will spawn loot and it'll basically do everything you, you would expect if you would physically kill the animal. So that's recommended. If you destroy the animal, it will just destroy the actor and eliminate it from the scene. It's much quicker. There's, there is more performant. But it's, it, won't, it won't activate anything that happens on death. Right. So if I click play here, again, and I enter the trigger, you see that the animals are just moving around. And... I'm just going to exit the trigger here and you can see that the animals are now uh, dying <laughs> and obviously they're, they're supposed to be simulating physics here um, but you can see that the animals are dropping dead. All right. The new option is kill inactive animals and that basically means that only if the animal is inactive will the animal be marked for kill? And that's important because if the animal is active, it probably means it's very close to the player. And you probably don't want the animal to drop dead if the animal is near the player, 
right? So my recommendation is if you have a really big open world with many different spawners, that you select the inactive option, only kill the inactive animals. And what's gonna happen is that when only the animals that are far away from the player, basically they will turn themselves inactive, will be killed. Notice that, that right now I exited the volume, but they're not really dying. And that's because they're still active. You can see that they're running around um, and they're active. So I will have to go really, really far for the animals to become inactive by default. And only then will the animals be killed. Now, what happens if you exit the trigger and most animals are active? Then basically none of the animals will be killed. So this is where the new options here, repeat despawn come into play. So repeat despawn total here is the number of tries that this trigger will try to kill the animals after you've exited the volume. And what is the delay between each try? And you would, you would ask, why would you want to do that? And well, the reason is because, again, we only want to kill inactive animals. So say that you enter a zone and there's 50 animals that are spawned all over the map. As soon as the player exits the zone, the animals that are inactive may be only the animals that are far away from the player. Those guys will be killed, but the animals that are near the player that the player can probably still see in the world, they're still active, they're still running around, and they're not going to get killed. Then the player keeps moving away and eventually leaves the zone entirely. And then those animals that were active at first that were not killed, 10 seconds later, this, this is going to go back and grab all of the animals and then try to kill all the inactive animals. And maybe a lot of those animals that were active 10 seconds later are now inactive and now they can be killed. And this is the amount of tries that will that'll try to call as many inactive animals as possible. The more tries here, the less performant it is because you basically have a loop but the more guaranteed it is that all of the animals that were spawned would be killed. If you want to be real performant and based on your level design, the player will not see the animals as soon as he exits the area, you may be able to either deselect this option and just kill them or maybe have this, uh, maybe, maybe three trash or something instead of 10, right? Uh, but the whole point is, I hope you understand the options here. The reason this is keeps trying is because we don't want the player to see the animals killed or disappear, right? That would look really bad. We want the player to be really far away and this method slowly kills the animals as they become inactive. And it not, not only does it despawn them gradually, which keep which makes the, the frame rate keeps more stable, but it makes sure that the game doesn't really show the animals being killed, okay? That is the option. And by the way, when we go into the activation manager um, video, you'll see this exact same setup in a much bigger level. We're going to analyze how I did it and how it works in addition to learning about the activation manager itself. These changes here were a, a more uh, general effort to make ABK more friendly to open world games, which I know are really popular right now, to make sure that you can set up your world um, that should be really, really big and keep your animals as performant as possible. That's the reason why we have this, right? Um, so you'll see, you know, right now it's very hard to see, I guess, but I promise you, you'll see how this works out in the next video when you look at the activation manager. Okay, so we already looked at this. You can only spawn inactive animals. Oh, and there's a new option on the animal spawners and they can now check for nearby players. That's the last thing that we're gonna check out here. So by default, if you click on a spawner, you, you'll notice here the options under player check. The do player check option is disabled. So it, they'll just spawn. But if we enable this, what we'll do is we're gonna do a player check. You, we're gonna debug it so you can see it with a radius here in this case for 4,000. And if the player is nearby, it will not spawn any animals. And again, that's to keep up the illusion. We don't want an animal to randomly spawn 
in front of the player that the player can see, right? So if I click play here and I enter, notice that on the left, look at the trace here, it detected the player and notice that the spawner on the left is not working. It's not spawning animals. And that's because there's a player nearby, right? The other ones are not even checking the player, so they're, they're uh, spawning. So I would again, by default, is off, but if you're making an open world game, my recommendation would be that you turn this on because you don't want your animals to be spawned near the player. And I'm going to make this a little bit more obvious. We're gonna debug all of them and only with a thousand. So the check is gonna be much smaller. And as soon as we enter the trigger, you can see the checks here. The player was not found because the radius was really small and they're all and all the animals are just spawning. And you can see that it does a check every single time the animal spawns. That's another important thing Oops. Uh, to consider is that it doesn't do the check just once. It keeps doing it every time it spawns. So notice here, I'm going to enter this area here. Notice that uh, other animals continue to spawn, but this spawner has been basically disabled because the player is here um, while the other animals are not. And notice that as soon as I left, that doe just spawned. All right. So that's pretty much it for the spawners, guys. Again, small changes, but really, really useful changes. And they're all building up to um, make your open world games a lot more performant. So thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next video.